This week on the top of Down Under, we find ourselves at the beautiful Mount Elizabeth Station off the Gibb River Road, cooking up a storm. Now, since we've been here last time, Luke and Emma, the station managers, have been really busy. Just over there is a new high quality amenities block. Best showers in the Kimberley, I reckon. And I'm taking full advantage of the new barbecue area as well. But why am I here? Well, there's good reason for that. Well, I've finally dragged him out from behind the camera. This is BJ, my better half, and he's going to join me. He's going to be my wingman on the Munja track. You ready for this? Mate, we've been 12 months waiting for this, haven't we? Let's get breakfast down. You've cooked up a storm. Hmm. You've got to grab a key. Yep. We're the track. All right. Off the Gibb River Road in northern Western Australia, the Munja track starts seven kilometres east of Mount Elizabeth Station. This private road initially traverses 145 kilometres west-northwest to Baxton Creek Bush Camp, before proceeding on a further 81 kilometres to reach Walker Inlet. It is a slow and rough trail to traverse, and due to time constraints, we are planning to head as far as Baxton Creek Bush Camp on this trip. We are finally on the Munja track. Now you will need to pick up your key from Mount Elizabeth Station and pay your entry fee as well. We're traveling in a convoy of two vehicles. It's always safer to have an extra vehicle there. Let's get on with this next adventure. I tell you what, how good does it feel to finally be on this track, BJ? It has been a long time coming, hasn't it? We've, uh, we've known about this track for maybe 15, 20 odd years, but this is the first opportunity that we've got where we can actually do the whole track out to Baxter Camp. I know, we did uh, come around this area last year, but do you remember, unfortunately, they had that really bad fire go through? Yeah, that was right. We were uh, all set to film. We were sitting at Mount Elizabeth Camp, and then that fire went through. So they asked us very nicely if we could hold off to this year to filming it. Yeah, they lost a bit of uh, infrastructure. They felt so sorry for them, poor things. But um, yeah, this time we're, we're good to go, and the track is looking sensational so far. We've been in the Kimberleys for a few weeks, and all I've been thinking about is this track, and here we are. I know mate, I know. It's, uh, it's definitely been on my bucket list for a while. Back when we had our hire company, the amount of people that said, hey, you've got to come and do the Munja track, that was one of those tracks that everyone seemed to talk about. They've done Cape York, they've done uh, the high country, where else do they go? The Munja track. We got told that time and time again by the serious customers that really wanted a bit of a challenge. This is the place to be. Yeah, alright, well we're on it now. Let's, uh, let's get amongst it, hey? Buddy, I'm playing uh, tourist this time. I'll sit back here and you lead the way. No dramas, and you reset your odometer at the homestead, didn't you, at Mount Elizabeth? I certainly did. Those trek notes you showed me last night, they all start from the gates at Mount Elizabeth, right at the homestead there. 9.6 k's is where we hit the gate. And from there, I'll give you the distance and you tell me what's coming up. Too easy, sounds like a plan. This should be a bit of fun. It'd be close to 21 years ago since I first met Penn. And ironically, the first time I saw her, she was in a Pajero four-wheel driving up the beach. Now, we've travelled all over Australia together, producing our show. 10 years this year, this is the 10th year of filming this show. And prior to that, Penny came with me into Arnhem Land, to Cape York, all over the countryside. But this is the first time I can think of in that 20 years that we've actually both been able to go four-wheel driving together again. Both got land cruisers and a tough track in front of us. For me, this is actually something pretty exciting, something I've been really looking forward to doing. 
When you pick up your key from Mount Elizabeth Station, they'll also give you a fact sheet on this track. And they also ask that you don't bring any trailers in here that are over 880 kilos in tear weight. So we have our hyper camper as a base camp at Mount Elizabeth and we've come here with just the two vehicles and the quad bike. And it always pays to travel with another vehicle so that's why my husband BJ is in our support vehicle that usually carries all our camera gear so it's really cool to have him in the driver's seat he's generally behind the camera so this is a little bit different for him and I think he's having a blast that formation off to the driver's side there looks pretty impressive too doesn't it yeah you can spend days wandering around here exploring yeah, I gotta stay focused on the road. I'm not passenger this time. I know, right? I just thought you were back there as my spare parts donor. <laughs> spare parts donor, you reckon? What are you planning on breaking something again this year? No, no, but it never hurts to have uh, a donor not too far behind. I'll be your donor, baby. Always got my back. Never leave your wingman, do you? Yep, moral of this series is never leave your wingman. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, we're gonna have some K's, don't we? Alright, I'll pick up the speed and start scooting. It's got a little rocky section into this dry creek and just taking it easy in. Yeah, just watching you there, that uh, extra 300 kilos of the quad bike actually doesn't look like it's making you sway too much. The, you still got some air in those airbags, have you? Yeah, I've got them pumped up to suit having the quad bike on there and as you can see from behind it just holds them perfectly working very nicely with my rear suspension set up back there. Yeah I would have thought that you know 300 odd kilos for a quad bike you'd be swaying or leaning more into some of these off camber stuff but it actually sits there pretty flat doesn't it? Yeah it does I don't even uh, bother looking like and it doesn't feel uncomfortable in the cab either because these cruisers uh, being narrow in the body they do tendency to to lean over a little bit so no it feels fine in here. I am missing the uh, coils in the back end of this one but you know what these new hybrid leaf springs actually ride pretty good. They're a far cry from the factory leaf spring that we had when we first bought your car. The shock absorber and the leaf combo actually are a bit of a hybrid these ones. They're quite smooth for the height that we've got so though I'm missing the coils a little bit I uh, quite surprised that this thing actually rides as well as it does. Yeah, I drove that car the other day and I was quite impressed with them as well. Hey Penz, are you getting hungry yet? Certainly am, it's 12.30, now lunchtime. I made a rookie error this morning, I didn't grab any snacks for this car. Everything in my fridge is all frozen. No, this is a good spot for lunch, I reckon. I've pulled up to you now, I'm going to pull alongside to get some lunch after. Sounds awesome, I'm just going to drop over those ledges. Um, Alright, so the plan is have some lunch, keep heading on the track and find a campsite soon? Yeah, I reckon so. We've got about probably another four hours of good life. This is the edge of Drysdale's River, so from here on we're really well and truly in the Munja track. How about we go till sort of 3.34, set up before it's dark, It'll be a nice change if we are swaying it at night. Yeah, I had a look at the notes and there's actually a few campsites on the way, so oh, we'll cool. take our pick. Yeah, no, it sounds great. Mate. <laughs> I think there's a few jump ups along the way. We might make them today. If not, thanks for an interesting day tomorrow. It does, doesn't it? It does. The table's handy, isn't it? Yeah, it's great. And you've got all that storage underneath as well for your tools. I know, a fair bit of gear. Pretty much rebuild a car on there. Grinders, welders, drills. Rattle guns. <laughs> Everything tucks in there nicely. Yeah, it's about 21 pound. So these are 295 70 17 tyres. So in old torque, that's about a 34 inch tyre. They're a bit of an odd bod. They're the mud train in the open country. Now the reason I chose these ones for this particular car, because Penn runs 35s in the RT. But I was looking at this load rating. Yeah, this one has a 128p load rating. So that is actually, each tyre is good for 1,800 kilos. Most tyres, even your serious off-road ones, between maybe 1,100 to 1,450. If you're a really tough tyre, you might get a 1,600 kilo tyre. But these ones here will do some of the maximum GVM work. 
They are the only one that I know of, and we supply a lot of tyres for companies that do do GVM upgrades. This is the only one I know of that goes out to 1,800 kilos in a 34-inch tyre, or in any tyre bigger than standard, basically. So they're a really tough sidewall to get that load rating. At 20, what have we got there? About 21 PSI, you can see it's only just starting to bulge. I reckon we could probably even try. We'll drop it down to about 20 with this load on the back. We're nowhere near our maximum weight. But just want to get a bit of flex, smoothen out that ride a little bit and take a bit of the jar out of the suspension, particularly the steering, actually. That's where you feel it the most. But let them down and uh, I think from here on, from what I've been told, it gets more rocky, bigger jump ups. So this will help. So I'm going to run 20 PSI in the front and 25 in the back because I've still got that quad bike on the back. So a bit of extra weight there means a little bit extra pressure in the tyres. We've got one more creek to cross and then we come to our first jump up. And looking at the trek notes, that's where it gets a little bit interesting. But I am jumping some rocks at the moment coming out of this creek bed. There's a few ledges to go over here. Lucky I have really good ties and they are just gripping, just crawling their way over these rocks. It's starting to get a bit more chopped up, isn't it? It is, yeah, there's a few ledges there. I just want to have a quick bow peep at that before I go down. Do you want me to guide you down? Yeah, right, eh? Sounds good. I'll give you the yeah. handheld UHF. Yeah, thank you. Cheers. Right. What are you on, 13? Yeah. 13, yeah. yeah. Alright, why do you keep you coming down nice and square? I actually might bring you over the biggest side of the ledge. I can come and get you dropping down square on it. Yeah, that line there looks pretty good, eh? The rock you're going to go up and then over on the passenger side. Yeah, he's still coming with you. Let, let your brakes off a little and just roll over him. Okay, now you're about to do the larger drop. Yeah, you've got this stuff. I don't even know why I got out of the car. <laughs> Go home and hose you through the worst of it. I think you can take it from here, eh? <laughs> no worries, you're right to come down there. Yeah, you're right, mate. Just keep on heading on down. It's all nice and simple. Too easy. I'll see you, see you at the end. Roger that. <laughs> Someone's done a little bit of road building here, I see. Someone's clipped a tree there and I've leant over. My quad bike overhangs my tray a little bit, so I have to keep an eye on that. But plenty of room. Just Finally into some fun stuff, this is awesome. I don't know what I was thinking. Can't have it out in the bag. Need me there. Alright, let's get this bad boy down. We've had a lot of four wheel drives over the year between you and I, and uh, these ones definitely have the best low range, I reckon, hands down by far, don't they? Yeah, and we love our rock crawling, we love going slow, so it suits what we do just perfectly. Yeah, that uh, new tune that we're both running on the Steinbauer chips. Give you that grunt when you need it down low and then the gearing is there to hold you back when you want to slow right down downhill. All right, I make out that this is Magpie Jump Up. It goes for about two kilometers and it seems rough and extreme. I always get a bit excited when the track says it's extreme. <laughs> you and me both, buddy. So far it's living up to its name, it's very rocky. Yeah, it's rocky, yeah, but it's not impossible. So a car with, you know, a little bit of probably two or three inches of lift would easily be able to go through this. Especially this year, I don't think the wet season's done too much damage to the road. How long do you want to keep going for this afternoon? Oh, well, I was hoping to pull up pretty soon. I suppose the other side of the coin too, you want to find somewhere that you can actually roll a swag out and not uh, dislodge a vertebrae on some of these rocks. <laughs> yeah, it's not exactly choice countryside for swag sleeping at the moment. I had a look at the trek notes 
and I think about two kilometers from here approximately is a place called Turkey Creek and it's marked as a campsite and the next campsite after that is a little bit further on so I don't know if we'll make it before dark that second campsite so we'll check out Turkey Creek and see what all the crew reckons. Yeah no nah, sounds good to me mate I'm happy camping anywhere I do really uh, miss my camper trail all of a sudden but yeah you know, I, I enjoy sleeping this way. Yeah, I miss the camper too, mate. That hot shower in there is always beautiful. This terrain is starting to smooth out a little bit. I think we can get a bit of speed up shortly. Want to have a race? You know I'd win. <laughs> Penny doesn't like losing at anything. If it's a race, it's game on. We are slightly competitive as a couple. Everything's a race. <laughs> We've arrived at Turkey Creek. There's some green grass on the other side of this creek, but I don't think I can get across it. This side has been burnt out from the fire last year. We don't have enough light to get to the next campsite. So I think we're just gonna call it quits, pull up camp now. It's as good a spot as any. We're going to sleep underneath a million stars tonight. That's what I love about being in a swag. You can unzip the canvas and look straight up at the most amazing sky. On the menu tonight is steak and only steak. Very simple meal. We have had an awesome day on the tracks, haven't we? We have. Steak's not perfect without a bit of chipolato. <laughs> True, I agree. What a day. It was pretty impressive. Yeah. The rock formations, the track. The track wasn't too technical, but it kept you entertained. It was manageable. Manageable, but interesting. You know, you still had to lock it in low range here and there. And I really enjoyed just taking my time soaking up the scenery and to come here we've got a really nice clearing for a campsite and we've got fresh water there we've washed the dust off and we've got a really good meal here like a steak. I know would you like to have your veggies with it? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Day two on the Mundra track and we have covered about 76 kilometers of this trail so far. That means we are just over halfway to Baxton camp and should reach our destination by tonight. So, did you get any sleep last night? Because that rain came in a little earlier than we expected. I know, and it started to get heavy, and I pulled the cover up on the swag a bit more. I'm like, please, don't get any heavier. Yeah. It, well, it hung around for about 10 minutes, but didn't really amount to much. 10 minutes? It was longer than that. I okay, I went back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Have a look at the sky, but... Oh, man. That's some dark clouds. Looming. It's a worry, isn't it? It's a bit of a worry. Uh, you know, this is middle of June. They didn't get any rain in the wet season. Here we are getting showers. It's all over the shop. Yeah. Oh, I think it'll be all right, though. you got RTs. I've got mud drains. Yeah, yeah. No, it'll be fine. Yeah. But it would be very interesting with a bit of water because it's so dusty. It would change everything. Yeah. yeah this, you know, there's a few spots we've been coming through and I'm like, it's almost bull dust. It's that fine now. Yeah, yeah. But uh, anyway, yeah. did you like your uh, couple this morning? Yeah, it was amazing. Thank you. I might have done it in the same fry pan as I did the steak last <laughs> night so uh, it's got a slightly steaky flavour <laughs> that's just a little bonus for you <laughs> it's breakfast with steak and eggs it's partly my fault because I forgot the kettle so. I wasn't going to point fingers but <laughs> <laughs> finish this glorious cuppa and then mm. break camp sounds good I've got five minutes before we break camp this morning, so I'm going to give you a quick rundown on the new 79 that we've got this series. This is the vehicle that all our guests that fly in and join us, they're driving. Myself, I even get a bit of a drive, which is kind of cool. This came straight from Iron Man three days before we left for film. So it had the snorkel, the side steps, the 12,000 pound winch, a full bar, suspension lift, all the stuff that you'd normally associate with a, an off-road vehicle. There was a few things I wanted to change though. It came with 33 inch tyres. I wanted to step up to a minimum of a 34 inch tyre. Now, when you go bigger on these things than a 33, they start scrubbing on the inner wheel arch here. What do we do? 
put some control arms in. That pulls the front diff further forward, corrects the caster obviously, but it gives you clearance for tyres bigger than the 33. Next problem, bigger tyres, well, <laughs> you end up with poor braking. 79 series are horrible in the brakes department, even from factory. We replace the brake pads, rotors, put stainless steel brake braided lines on. The only other thing then is to try and increase the braking pressure. Again, J-Max, we've gone with their booster. It increases the pressure for the same pedal application. They're a must. There is no way you want to drive these cars. There's lots of money involved in them. They just don't stop. You're taking your life in your hands, not improving the braking. Braking sorted. We've turned to tow the boat with this one, so we need more power. Another call to Cairns Diesel. Daniel, hook us up. Penny's car, she's been running the Steinbauer for a few years. Last year she had the Steinbauer chip remapped to what they call the Penny Tune. I asked for exactly the same thing. I want low down torque, straight off the line. I don't want to be pulling heaps of revs to get my horsepower. They remapped it according to the same as Penny's. This tune, I really love it. You can lug this thing down to next to no RPM. I'm looking at like 600 RPM and still accelerate away. Other things that we've done. This car already had spotlights and a dual battery. We went for an inverter in cab so we can charge our camera gear on the run. We also took the fridge off the tray, we put it inside the cab. It's only a little 40 litre, but it's a drink fridge, a bit of extra food space. That works a treat. And from there, pretty much the truck is how it came. It's been a really good little unit. A couple of little extras like a water tank under the back just to wash hands because camera gear, you want clean hands and the maxi cases on the back. What's also important on these trips is good communications, particularly in these dry, dusty conditions. We've had to spread out sometimes at like 5, 10, 15 kilometres apart. So we put an Oricom dual receive unit in, plus their premium aerial package. Now that one gives us two antennas in one. We can spread out and have the long distance flat country antenna, or we can change it down to the smaller one, and it's really good for the mountainous region. Now this has given us a really good package, which is actually working really well. We'll do other little changes later on down the track. We've got the space cases up there. We might change that to a dog box later on. A few little bits and pieces. Keep an eye on this car because it's going to evolve over the next couple of years, same as Penny's. But for a basic tour, if you want to start out, have a look at this package and start building from yourself. Everyone will build it slightly different for what they want to do, but this is working really well as a second vehicle for us. This is day two on the Munja track. Had a really nice camp at Turkey Creek last night and this morning. Our next obstacle is called Fig Tree Jump Up and it's fairly lengthy, it goes for 4K. So the road isn't too bad at the moment, but uh, when it says jump up on the track notes, that usually means that it's pretty rocky. How are you going back there, BJ? I mean this in the nicest possible way, but I'm enjoying watching your rear end work. <laughs> Yeah, it feels pretty cool in the cab. I was just actually talking to the camera about how you got 35 psi in those airbags and yet she's still flexing nicely. So I think you found the sweet spot for that setup with the quad bike on the back off road. Yeah, absolutely. It feels really good. Everything feels nice and in place. Nothing feels too jarring. I'm just uh, rolling over these rocks, taking my time. Really stable looking from behind. The upside is that rear end of yours has got adjustable sway bar lengths from really firm to really soft, but you need 10-15 minutes of crawling in the dirt to change them around. With the airbags and that setup you've got where you can pump them up and drop them down from that compressor, mate, what, 10 seconds and you're done? And you just find the happy medium and you go from there. Yeah, flick of a button and it's all over. It's so good. There's a massive rock escarpment just to my driver's side here. This is Jemison's arch and it's pretty clear, the arch. It's just this massive hole in the escarpment. I'll go and have a closer look. Jemison Arch is of cultural significance to the local Indigenous people. In fact, it's right on the edge of Mount Agnes Aboriginal Land Trust. There it is right in front of me now. So guys, any cultural sites, great to stop, have a look. But remember, don't touch. They're significant. It's almost like going into somebody's church. So it's always nice to go and observe. But remember, show respect for the land, for the people, and for the significance of the area. Standing back from the escarpment, you actually get a really good view of Jamison's Arch. You can't go too much closer because the undergrowth is too thick. Now we're halfway along the Munja track and it has lived up to its name. 
Join us next week as we continue to Baxton Camp and explore the wild but beautiful area around there. I'll see you then.